D&D character concept. Woman makes deal with demon to have its child in exchange for eternal life or something. Woman then makes deal with witch and offers her firstborn for like riches or something. Woman dumps demon baby on witch, absconds with her winnings and leaves witch and demon fighting for custody. Half demon baby grows up learning magic and visiting hell on weekends and every second Christmas. Does the woman act like a sort of vodka aunt who shows up sometimes to teach the child how to work the system? Hey, here you go, Timmy, have a new Xbox. This year I'm gonna teach you the ins and outs of magical tax evasion. Awkward Rogue is terrible at stealth is a classic gag, but I've always preferred taking it in the opposite extreme because turning around and suddenly there's this absolutely enormous fucker all up in your personal space with no clear indication of how they managed to approach undetected or how long they've been standing there will never stop being funny. Probably bad RPG ideas. A catfolk with the goal of reaching the edge of the world, universe, material plane, and pushing something off the edge. This uh, NP's name is Jamity Costco. Right. Jumanji Costco. A D&D campaign where everyone is a bard and you're a punk rock band trying to go on tour, but all these villages are just so f up. <laughs> Our party druid had just cast Pass Without a Trace in preparation of sneaking down a long hallway with a lot of doors. All right, everyone, roll a stealth check, although it doesn't really matter, as the only way you can fail this is if you roll a nat one. Everyone rolls, then immediately burst into a fit of laughter as the home ranger rolls a one. I guess I decided now would be a good time to practice playing my bagpipes. Naturally, every door immediately opened, leading to an epic hallway fight scene as the rest of the party berated the gnome for whipping out his bagpipes in the middle of a dungeon. <laughs> You were born of a sacrilegious union. Your green dragon mom never figured the knight she seduced while masquerading as a noblewoman was a silver dragon in disguise. You'd no idea either, born a human orphan. When your dragon blood awoke, so did the dangers which all your heritage entails. I was born half dragon. Oh sh what's the other half? Different dragon. <laughs> Same two halves dragon? That's just being a whole dragon. You'd fucking think so, wouldn't you? D&D is great. I just tried to slam a guy with a two-handed maul and missed, swinging into the floor. I roll for damage against the floor because of course I do. I roll high, the tiles are crushed to bits. As a free action, I grab a handful of floor gravel and shovel it into my mouth and just straight up eat it in an intimidation attempt. I fought an opponent who had an eye patch. I used mage hand to pick up his eye patch and move it to his other eye. <laughs> The villain strikes you down, laughing as your attacks bounce off his armor. It was forged from the scales of a fallen great worm, he claims. No mortal magic can penetrate it. Shit, I'll have to cast Wish. To kill him? To teleport yourself to safety? No, no, I reach out, touch his armor, and cast Resurrection. <laughs> D&D character concept, an adventurer who became a warlock by accident after she started dating a deity. They're very aware of how mortal and fragile their GF is, and it's stresses them out, so they imbibe her with as much magic as they could to help her out. She's not even very good at it. Strength is still her highest stat, her intelligence modifier is zero, she tries to solve all her problems with her fists and has zero sense of self-preservation. Her divine partner knows no peace. <laughs> <laughs> Your druid is sneaking through the campsite, and a few soldiers start walking towards her general direction. Uh, I turn into a tree. The camp you're sneaking through is in the middle of an open field. Shit. Uh, I'll turn into a tree anyway. Hey. Has that tree always been there? Been here for weeks. Rolled the bluff. Not <laughs> 20. Well, the tree would know better than us, I suppose. Spellcasters hate this fact, but if you just stick your fingers in their mouth while they're casting a spell with a verbal component, it's literally more effective than a counterspell. This also works with pinning their hands against the wall while they're trying to use semantic components. Basically, if you make... <laughs> Basically, if you make out sloppy style while pressed against a wall, the spellcasters can't do anything. <laughs>